Hi friends, today I'm going to cover Azure Architecture guidelines for starters. I received a few requests from the guys that they wanted to start the architecture but don't know where to start. That is the reason I'm making this video. Let us dive into our topic. So very first thing you should know where to start. For any cloud applications, you start with these phases discover assess implement monitoring and administration these are the five important phases which are required for architecture again it may vary based on the type of application you are implementing so but usually these are the common steps like you will first understand the requirements and also see what is the non-functional functional requirement of that particular cloud application and you will assess uh, in terms of like what is the current systems they already have or what is the pros and cons in the current systems and also what is that expectation down the line all those things you will first assess and then you will start implementing based on your assessment and the conclusion so then next one is after implementing and it is gone to the production then you will continuously monitor that and also there should be some kind of administration activities need to be performed like adding more users adding more policies compliances addressing so many tickets for that particular resources so all these are involved in any uh, implementation now just focusing on the architecture side so that will happen in during the assessment and then first you will assess and provide the architectures for the particular implementation to start with any architecture very important thing is icons you need to depict your thoughts in the form of the pictures or the diagrams so for that here i listed down few links first one is microsoft related icons the second one is AWS related icons. The other one is GCP cloud related icons. You simply need to download. You need to do, uh, you need not to do much about this. Let me show you here. You can see it. Uh, this is a link where you can download all the icons. You will get all the PNGs. And uh, for the AWS, you have the resources here. And you can see whether you want to download PNG or SVG or even it is available in the PPTs. Similar way you have the icons for the GCP. So you can simply need to download those and then place it wherever it is required. In case if you are using some kind of app services, just place that icon, find and place that icon. So moving back to my slides. So this is one of the important thing you will need. Just download those icons and be prepared. Uh, I already downloaded a few icons just to show you. You can see here GCP icons. It, it is all in the PPT. And uh, similarly, I have icons, uh, Azure icons here for the various resources. And then I have for the AWS as well. You can see. So it's very simple to download. You can get plenty of icons here. Moving back to the slides. The second one uh, you need is references. You can't directly jump into the architecture. You can see some examples like how they were prepared earlier. Or you can also study the earlier architectures, earlier implementations, how they were done. Based on that, you can improvise your uh, architectural story. So for that, uh, Azure has their own architectural references. AWS and uh, GCP also have architectural references. Simply just go to the links. Um, I can show you that as well. You can see here Azure architectural references. Uh, they have given the variety of architectures there are plenty uh, there are a number of pages here so you can select what type of application architecture you will need whether it is for the web or maybe something mobile all those stuff so i can select e-commerce and then i can see how the architecture is designed but you can't use it as it is for your requirement you have to make changes as per your requirement similarly you have architectural reference architectures here I mean AWS architectural references similarly GCP also have some architectural references so you can follow them don't blindly jump into the action first check how they are designing and how much it matches based on that you can design for, for, for your application the third resource is case studies 
So you also go through the case studies which are already implemented. So for example, here I provided case studies link and how various companies implemented for their requirement. You can just go through that and check how they implemented or migrated to cloud. So this is the third resource which will be important for you to start with the architectures. So moving on, okay, what are the tools I can use way to draw these architectural diagrams? So I usually use Microsoft Visio. Even I use Microsoft PowerPoint directly to place all my icons and design my whole architecture. So these two tools I use, but there are plenty of other tools available. I just listed down three other tools like Visual Paradigm, Cloudcraft, and uh, Ascentry. These are the tools available. Uh, you can just check here. Uh, this is a Visual Paradigm where you can easily design all your arc cloud related architectures. You can select whether you want to design AWS or Azure or Google, GCP or IBM. Then you also have Cloudcraft where you will be able to design and uh, our entry is also there. So based on your requirement and the budget, you can buy one of them or uh, you can even use Visio. Visio is also really good uh, for cloud architectures, which I am currently using. So these are the tools you can use for your architectural stuff. The next one, what are the key parameters and areas for a good cloud architecture? So these are the various stuff you need to consider operational excellence. So after you deploy your applications, how the operations are going to be performed on that. So that all that is one of the important criteria to con uh, design your cloud architecture, security, reliability, performance efficiency, and cost op optimization are the five key areas and parameters which you need to consider anytime when you are designing the architecture. If you take one more step deeper, these are the areas you need to consider for any architecture. Take your web applications, e-commerce, mobile applications, or you're designing some kind of big data applications, or AI-related applications, any applications. So you have to consider these are the parameters based on your type of application implementing. So load balancing. So you need to balance your load based on the traffic coming into your websites or the applications. Monitoring, logging, backup and restore, infrastructure as a code, high availability and disaster recovery, alerts, authentication authorization, SIM integrations, security, service management and cost management. These are the various things you need to consider as a building blocks of your architecture and you need to decide what tool should come or what kind of feature should come into your architecture while you are placing all the architecture of Azure or GCP or AWS. To understand a little more on the architecture like how to design uh, the Azure or AWS architectures, you can go back to my channel and then check here. I made few playlist on the playlist you can see cloud real-time issues uh, real-time scenarios and also the cloud architectures that will really help you to understand how to architect or how to design the architecture by considering the various aspects like disaster recovery high availability also the logging security uh, the load balancing all those stuff are addressed as part of this so uh, after this video definitely watch that to get some idea uh, especially the real-time scenarios will really help you how the phases will go and uh, even how you will decide the architectures so let us go back to our slides so the next one is uh, native principles cloud native principles what are the principles you can follow uh, while designing your architecture so principle one that is like you need to consider uh, the design for the automation if you do manual for the medium sized and bigger projects, it doesn't really work. So always you have a system in place for the automation, like design with the infrastructure as code, also implement CACD, continuous integration, continuous uh, deployment or development, scale up and scale downs, monitoring and automation recovery. Second one is like be smart with state. So you need to maintain the state. Uh, you, if you know the topics of stateless or uh, stateful, 
then you will understand this like while you're scaling up servers you also need to consider what is your application type whether it is a stateless or stateful uh, even while you're repairing or rolling back or load uh, or maintaining the load balancing then you need to uh, be smart with the state uh, it is always recommended to go with the stateless uh, so that you will not have any type of issues uh, to maintain your sessions or your mm, bringing up more servers in as part of the load balancing or the scaling up process so the third principle is favor many services and i mean as you know many services always are, are always good for m less management if you take uh, unmanaged services you have to take care of your disaster recovery backups everything should be taken care by you so if it is many service you don't need to really worry about your server maintenances so fourth one is practice defense in depth uh, like security always be architecting so architecting job never stop like you should keep on progressing as you know every cloud provider is coming up with uh, new new features almost every week so you should be very smart uh, to leverage all those few features into your uh, systems that's why you have to always be architecting so with this i will end my session but you keep uh, going with my videos especially with the real-time scenarios and uh, how to architect the various uh, scenarios thanks for watching my videos